I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Petak here. So today's video will be an annual video that I always do on my YouTube channel every year, usually the end of the year. Well, usually I post this video at the month of December, but because I have a lot of videos that I want to post in December, so I think I might as well post about, well, about this now. And yeah, Choco Boy, just like always, will always be in this video because last year I featured him on this video as well. And today's video will be about the top 10 or maybe top 12 priority series that I want to start and finish in the year 2024. Now, this doesn't mean that I will be able to read all of them, but usually I will end up reading probably about half of them. It all depends on my reading mood and also my schedule. Once again, I'm only including series that are completed or soon to be completed within next year, and I haven't started any of them yet. So the first series that I plan to start uh, next year, and this will be a self-published fantasy series. Right now, I am in the middle of waiting for the premium hardcover edition to arrive first, and once it arrives, I will begin reading this series immediately. And I'm talking about Threadlight Trilogy by Zach Argyle. I've heard so many great things about this trilogy. Uh, the first book is The Voice of War, and then the second book is The Stone of Light, and finally, the third and final book in the trilogy, The Bonds of Chaos. I think the premium hardcover and also omnibus edition is scheduled to arrive in the month of December or probably in the month of January. And this one, as far as I know, is a series highly recommended to those who love Mistborn and also uh, The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson and also The Lightbringer by Brandwix, at least for the magic system. So I really enjoyed those three series. As some of you might know, Mistborn and also uh, The Stormlight Archive are some of my favorite series of all time and I love the magic system in the Lightbringer series. So here's hoping I will end up liking uh, the Threadlight trilogy. And I might as well start reading the series using the Ultimate Edition. And speaking of Ultimate Edition, well, this Ultimate Edition for the first book in the series is, I think, going live today. The Kickstarter campaign is going live today. And I am talking about the Gun Metal Gods Quartet by Zamil Akhtar. So Daniel Green has praised the first book of this series very highly. And I have been looking forward to reading this series for quite a while now. And, well, Zamil Akhtar has confirmed that the fourth and the final book in the Gunmetal God series is scheduled to be released in summer 2024. So, yeah, it will be completed next year, so I might as well start reading this grimdark fantasy series uh, next year. I am still not sure whether I will be able to gain the premium edition or not through the Kickstarter campaign because right now, well, money is not too good because this is the end of the year and I have spent a lot of money on special edition and books uh, this year. But I will try my best to get a copy of the Gun Metal Gods Ultimate Edition, the Metal Edition. But even if I don't end up getting a copy of the Premium Edition, I will still read the Gun Metal Gods uh, next year. Hopefully finish it as well if I end up loving, let's say, the first two books in the series. Because it is also one of my goals to read a more grimdark fantasy. I've been a bit neglecting uh, the subject Genre lately and well speaking of grimdark the next series that i want to read is supposedly one of the most ultimate grimdark fantasy series of all time and yes the second apocalypse series by r scott baker uh, i think the first trilogy is called the prince of nothing trilogy and then after that we have the aspect emperor quartet and my plan right now is to at least read uh, the first trilogy in the second Apocalypse series. For the second Apocalypse series, pretty much everyone who loved Grimdark Fantasy have mentioned that I will end up loving this series very much, especially because I love Berserk and also From Software games like Dark Souls and also Bloodborne. Right now, if you have watched my favorite Grimdark Fantasy series as of 2023 that I recently posted, then some of you might know that A Song of Ice and Fire and also The First Law still reign as the champions of my favorite Grimdark Fantasy series especially the first law. But, well, here's hoping that the second Apocalypse series will eventually top that. I'm not sure whether that's possible or not, but I am looking forward to finding out whether that will be achievable. I also heard that, although it's kind of different, but because I love Malazan Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson, then there's also a big chance I will end up liking the second Apocalypse series, at least the first trilogy, The Prince of Nothing trilogy by R. Scott Baker. And of course, I do not plan to read only Grimdark Fantasy. And the next series that I want to tackle uh, next year 
is of course The Last King of Austin Art Series by Tad Williams. This is the second series in the entire Austin Art Saga. I have finished reading Memory, Sorrow, and Don Chilji, which is one of my priority series to start and finish this year. I have completed that and I am thoroughly satisfied with that reading experience. And because The Navigator's Children is finally slated to be released in November 2024, I plan to read the entire Last King of Boston art starting from the Witchwood Crown and then Empire of Grass and then Into the Narrow Dark and finally The Navigator's Children in the year 2024. Uh, some readers have told me that I will end up loving uh, The Last King of Boston art even more than Memory, Sorrow and Ton Chilji. But I think as far as popularity grows, I think many seems to think that Memory, Sorrow and Ton, well from my experience as well, Memory, Sorrow and Ton is much more popular than The Last King of Austin art, which is a shame if The Last King of Austin art end up becoming something even more superior compared to Memory, Sorrow and Thorn. But yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think once I read uh, more books in the Austin art saga, I think I'm quite confident in including uh, Ted Williams into my list of favorite authors. And of course, if you are a part of my Patreons, then I look forward to reading the continuation of the Austin art saga together with all of you. And I want to apologize that I couldn't get around to doing a read-along, a read-along or the live video for the second and the third book in Memory, Sorrow and Ton Shulji, The Stone of Farewell and also to Green Angel Tower. I couldn't get the schedule right with Alex from Tall Guy Reads, so probably next year there won't be any live show from both of us, but I will still do the read-along together with my patrons on each book in the series. And yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Looking forward to reading uh, The Last King of Austin art uh, next year. I think some of you might have already realized that I have included the Austin Art Saga probably three times in this video and the next one is another that I have included probably uh, two times or this is the third time but I'm talking about uh, Words of Light and Shadow by Johnny Words. I don't know why every time I want to start reading the series even though I really want to I always felt like I'm not in the right reading mood and had space to tackle this massive, intricate, and very detailed series. But because Song of the Mysteries, the final book in this 11 books long uh, epic fantasy series is finally coming in May 2024, I do plan to at least start reading the series and hopefully finish Words of Light and Shadow. The plan right now is to read one book per month from the month of January until November. And let's see whether that's possible or, uh, or not because as I said in the beginning of this video, it all depends on my reading mood and also my reading schedule. But my experience with reading Jani Words books has been pretty wonderful. The Reef War Empire trilogy that she wrote together with Raymond E. Feist is still one of my top favorite trilogies of all time. And I also highly enjoyed reading the standalone novel by Jani Words to write Hell's Chasm. So here's hoping that I will love Words of Light and Shadow as much or maybe even more than Rift War Empire trilogy. Just like our Scott Baker's second apocalypse series, even though this is done in a different way, many have mentioned that this is very suitable to those who love reading Malazan Book of the Fallen, but it is more character centered. And that's something very, very encouraging for me because I love character driven epic fantasy. I still have four priority series that I want to start and finish uh, next year. As some of you might have realized, these are uh, the series that I just mentioned. Some of them are pretty massive and ambitious. Well, the next few that I want to tackle, they aren't too big. And the next one is about The Memoirs of Lady Trent by Mary Brennan. So I heard a lot of wonderful things about Mary Brennan's books, whether it's The Memoirs of Lady Trent or the one that she co-wrote together, The Rook and Rose Trilogy. But because I have owned all the books in The Memoirs of Lady Trent, then I think it is time for me to tackle uh, reading The Memoirs of Lady Trent series. Again, just like Wars of Light and Shadow, this one is also something that I plan to start reading one book per month starting from the month of January, if my reading mood suits uh, the narrative. The cover to the series though, they are so gorgeous. And as far as I know, I think each book in the series actually contain interior artworks by Todd Lockwood, the cover artist of this series. And yeah, Todd Lockwood is one of the most highly respected and also popular artists in the fant fantasy and science fiction genre. I look forward to reading the memoirs of Lady Trent series. I know that Murphy really highly recommend reading this series uh, as well. Okay, I think Choco is kind of bored, so I'm going to let him go first. <laughs> But yeah, the next series that I want to start reading uh, next year, this is a trilogy. And you can actually see this on the back here. And yeah, this is for the War Art Saga by Wesley Chu, starting from the Art of Prophecy and then the Art of Destiny. And then the third book, well, honestly, the title and the release date for the third book in the War Art Saga, 
are not revealed yet, but I think I have a feeling that the title will be uh, based on the series will be The Art of War. And usually Wesley Chu do release uh, one book per year in his series. So I think it is very likely that the third and the final book in the trilogy will be released in 2024 as well. And yeah, this is an Asian inspired and also wuxia uh, epic fantasy series. And I have wanted to read this series for quite a while now. I know that Elliot Brooks, uh, Al, really loved the first book, Art of Prophecy, and the cover art by Tran Nguyen, absolutely beautiful. Looking forward to reading this trilogy uh, within next year. And another trilogy that I look forward to start reading and hopefully finish next year, this is the Kitama trilogy by Daniel Abraham. I have read every fantasy and sci-fi books by Daniel Abraham. Uh, the Dagger and the Coin, The Long Price Quartet, and also the Expand series. I have read all of them. And of course, I want to read the Kitama trilogy as well. The first book is The Age of Ash, the second book is The Blade of Dream, and the third book hasn't been revealed yet. But because Age of Ash and also Blade of Dream has a release gap of one year, then I think it is very likely that the third book will be released in 2024 as well. And yeah, I definitely will read the Kitama trilogy uh, next year. The ninth priority series that I want to start reading next year, and again, hopefully finish, this is for Arc of a Side Trilogy by Neil Shusterman. Now, this is, I think, a YA trilogy. And well, as some of you might know by now that I don't usually click with a lot of YA fantasy or sci-fi now. And I think this one is a dystopian uh, sci-fi novel, I think. But when it comes to Neil Shusterman books, everything I heard about his books, everything sounds very appealing to me. And I want to try. I want to try reading uh, The Arc of a Side trilogy. Also because each book in the trilogy is relatively short, I think I can fit this easily into my reading schedule. I don't know too much about this trilogy and I plan to keep it that way before I start reading uh, Arc of a Side trilogy. But if you do love reading The Arc of a Side trilogy, do let me know whether you think I will end up loving this trilogy or not. I think The Thunderhead, uh, the second book in the trilogy, is the most highly praised book in the entire trilogy. And also, I think there's a collection of short stories titled Gleanings that I already own as well. And for the final priority series that I want to start and finish, well, this is for Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. A surprise, right? This is not a fantasy. This is not a sci-fi book. And this is also not a historical fiction. I think this is a murder mystery. Lately, I have been getting tons of recommendation uh, for me to start reading Thursday Murder Club, especially when I want to take a little break from reading heavy uh, fantasy and sci-fi books. And also, thank you so much to Rustage for putting this series on my radar. See, Rustage, I do listen to your recommendation too. And I have actually purchased the first three books in the Thursday Murder Club series with the final book being gifted to me by my friend coming to my way uh, soon. So yeah, I do plan to start reading this entire quartet within next year. Honestly, even though most of my readings are fantasy and sci-fi and also historical fiction, but I have seen uh, Thursday Murder Club popping up on my social media quite uh, many times. So I think right now it is the right time for me to start reading it uh, next year. So those are really the top 10 priority series that I want to start and finish next year. But as I said, because it all always depends on my reading mood, I do have some reserves that I think at least I will start reading probably not finished, but I will start reading them uh, next year. And these are The Shattered Sea Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Even though The Shattered Sea has been marketed as a YA fantasy, but this is Joe Abercrombie, and he is one of my favorite authors. The First Law World is one of my top favorite series of all time. It is still my favorite grimdark fantasy series of all time. And I want to finish reading all of his books, and I only have uh, The Shattered Sea uh, the Shattered Sea Trilogy by him that I haven't read. And I think once I read that, then I'll be ready to read uh, The Devils in the year 2025. His newest upcoming adult epic fantasy book that is not related to the first law of The Shattered Sea. But yeah, very pumped for that one, but I have to be patient. I will read The Shattered Sea first. And other than that, I also plan to tackle two historical fiction or historical fantasy series. And these are The Guile Song by Sean Lawless, supposedly an incredibly well-written character-driven fantasy, an Irish historical fantasy series. The first book is The Children of Gods and Fighting Men. And then the second book is The Words of Kings and Prophets. The third book, I have asked Shauna Lawless about this, but she has mentioned the third book is definitely being released in uh, 2024. Most likely fall 2024. 
And finally, the last one, last but not least, this one I plan to start reading but definitely not finish. This is the King's Bridge series by Ken Follett. Yeah, starting from Pillars of the Earth and then World Without End and then A Column of Fire, The Evening and the Morning, and finally the newest one, The Armor of Light. If all goes according to plan, I plan to read at least the first three books in the King's Bridge series. But if I fail to read three books in the King's Bridge, then I, at the very least, will definitely read the first book in the series, Pillars of the Earth. If I'm not mistaken, each book in the King's Bridge series is a standalone novel, a one-off standalone novel taking place in the fictional uh, city uh, King's Bridge. But each book in the series chronologically differs by hundreds of years. And yeah, well, Pillars of the Earth is something that I've heard so many times and well, the majority of the comments and reviews for the series, especially Pillars of the Earth and World Without End, have been insanely positive and I want to try. I want to try reading the King's Bridge series and find out for myself whether I will end up living this series or not. It is about time I start finding a new favorite historical fiction series. Let's see whether this will end up topping the Cemetery of Forgotten Books by Carlos Rizafon uh, for me. So I think that's about it for me today and also Choco is back. So yeah, he's here to say goodbye to all of you. Ta-da! And yeah, yeah, so that's the top 10 or the top 12 or 13 priority series that I want to start and finish in the year 2024. This will give you an idea of some of the series that I plan to start reading and reviewing in 2024. But this, of course, doesn't include uh, the ongoing series that I'm in the middle of reading, like The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, or Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown, and also the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio, and many more. Next week, I will release my list of most anticipated books of 2024, most anticipated release of 2024. But until then, I think that's about it from me today. Uh, do let me know what you think about my priority series in the year 2024, and also do tell me what are some series that you plan to start reading or maybe finishing as well uh, next year. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.